Some of you might remember this card. This is the Dolan card that I used for the memory upgrade on the RX 480. And yeah, so with this card, I basically use most of the valuable parts, right? Memory is gone, power stages are gone, some of the regulators are gone, but there's one valuable part left and that's the core. And this core, when I bought the card, I never really troubleshooted it because it was more useful to me as a parts card where I can harvest the parts from rather than saving it or repairing it. And that leads me to believe that this core is still actually good. I did some measurements and all of them suggest to me that the, the core is still healthy. However, I can't know it, but I believe it's good. On the other hand, this is an RX 580 and or a little bit of backstory on that card. I got it with a dead short on the 12 volt rails, uh, rail, and the reason for that was a, was a blown power stage with like very violently with molten solder splattered around the caps. This also took out the phase doublers, the 5 volt LDO, and the 1.8 volt uh, voltage rail. I fixed all of that except for the 1.8 volt rail. There I have a very low resistance of less than 100 ohms to ground from the 1.8 volt rail. And um, sometimes there is the bias chip on the 1.8 volt rail, very uh, rarely, but it can be not the case this one. And in that case it pretty much goes straight to the core. That is bad news of course because that means in all likeliness the core is gone. There are some caps um, on that rail obviously but I'm pretty sure that it's the core and not the caps that are gone. So you might have guessed it already but what I want to try now is um, save this RX 580 with an RX 480 core Swap that one over here. Yeah, have a look how that pans out. It's gonna be fun. Oh, and it's an 8 gigabyte variant. This is my Super PUI VGA rework station, uh, I guess. It consists of a hot plate and part of a Xbox One S shell where I cut a hole into it. And then um, I will use a temperature probe to monitor the temperature. And I do it manually, or I tried it out with um, the one with another card uh, beforehand, and it overshoots like 30, 40 degrees. That means that I will turn it off at a, around 110 degrees above ambient. So that's 110 plus 20 ambient is 130, and then the overshoot of 30 or 40 degrees, we are at around 170 degrees peak temperature. And uh, if it's heated up, I will also use top heat with the hot air station to give it like the last bit of temperature that is needed. Let's try it out. So, um, as you can see, the car is removed. I wicked away all the solder, and uh, yeah, it was I was lucky because, as you could have seen, the temperature probe here, um, the tape got loose. And at that point, I should have aborted the whole thing and made sure that the temperature probe is in place. But I didn't. I continued. And that was 
kind of a mistake because at that point I was I didn't know what temperature it was and then I rushed it with um, removing it so I should have been a little bit more patient because on this core I have missing like five pads here on this corner and it isn't too it's not a tragedy because it's the that core anyways but um, yeah that shouldn't happen with the functioning core because that would be bad now I also um, checked the resistance measurement for the 1.8 volt and sure enough we have now like 3 kilo ohms or 5, I don't know, way way higher than before. That means that the short or the very low resistance on the 1.8 volts rail was actually due to the core and not because of some uh, dead uh, capacitor or something. So that's good to know. Now, for next time, I will find a better solution for the temperature probe because the way it was right now is no bueno. On the one hand, I need the flux, but it also the flux makes the tape come off. There's a bit of a trade-off. I have to see what I can do. Maybe I can put it farther away. I have to figure something out with that. But apart from that, yeah, the car it came out pretty good. Pads are clean, all of the pads are uh, fine. Uh, I can't see any moved components or like dinged um, memory chips. The resistance is fine, so I'm somewhat hopeful that this was a success so far. So let's remove the good core. This time I hope the temperature probe stays in place, but um, yeah, we'll see. That went a lot smoother than last time. I think I didn't uh, damage any pads, so let's have a look. So, let's reboil it. Now that we have reballed the chip, we need to put it back on. I have to fully align it and then we can start. On the left side you can see temperature reading. I hope this time the temperature probe doesn't get loose. Since I'm soldering it back to the board. I actually wait anyways until the until the chip aligns itself. So it will move a bit. I will look more for that rather than temperature since it needs to align itself. Otherwise there is that's not, not good. Also this time I shimmed it a little bit or when I tried it out on a broken card uh, I had the issue that the chip actually was a bit crooked. Probably worked but it was definitely not nice and I hope this time it gets better. But yeah, obviously this is very due to yourself, so whatever. Let's start. I put it into relative, so from now on it's the temperature difference to room temperature, which is around 20 degrees C. And that was the temperature probe. Last time at 100 degrees above ambient, the flux, or 120 degrees in absolute values, the flux began to uh, uh, bubble and I go for that this time too. So as soon as the flux comes out and bubbles, I will turn it off, then wait, then um, blast it with uh, uh, hot air from above until it aligns itself. Yeah, that's the bubbling I guess. Now 
weight a bit more, and then eat it from top. The star heat from top. So I guess I hope it was an electrolytic that caught fire, but we'll see shortly. So it turns out it was actually not the cap that burned. So thinking about like maybe the electrolytic could have caught fire, but no. It seems it was just here the flux that ripped down on the to the hot plate. So I guess it's easy to fix, clean it and be done with it. Now let's Get rid of the burn marks. Never thought I would say that. So. Yeah, the bulk of it is gone. I will put it into a, an ultrasonic cleaner, anyways, but um, just to see if it works. It, it's fun. And the card reeks. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Oh, and started. Or gets warm, and we have a picture very nice. So I'll assemble it, and then we have a third chest with it. So we are back in Windows. Um, as you can see, I didn't change anything with the BIOS so far. Um, it's recognized, or it's stock BIOS from the XFX RX 580, and um, so far it works pretty good. Um, as you can see, sensors work, we have temperature, we have fan speed, we can change it. So, so far, so good. Now, the RX 580 series has a little bit higher clock speeds and also a little bit higher voltages. I could leave it at, as is, I guess, but I probably downgrade it to an RX 480 since uh, we have lower voltage, lower speeds, and this chip, yeah, we don't want to overclock that chip, I guess, at that point. Now, when choosing the RX 480 BIOS, we have to have a look at the B-Core controller IC. And in the case of the XFX card, it's this NCP81022. And this happens to be the same uh, controller as, in, uh, as for this uh, Sapphire Nitro RX 480. And that's the reason why I chose to use this BIOS here. And but obviously I have the eight gigabyte card, and I will take the eight gigabyte BIOS. That's that's for sure. But um, the the important part is the controller IC, and that is correct. And to flash that, I already, as you can see here, um, I already copied it into the ATI flash directory and this is the commands to use it so we have uh, mdvb flash.exe then the minus p option is um, to that tells the program to write it minus f is force so it will um, do, it doesn't check for any compatibility or whatever so it's force uh, forcefully written zero is the adapter number so it's the only card in the system right now so it's a zero and then the, we have to insert the name so sapphire rx480 blah blah so like yeah we can start it now and as you can see here i already did it um, this is the secondary BIOS, it, uh, it has a dual BIOS card and I changed it already and um, we flashed it onto it and I already checked it, the card works also with the RX 480 BIOS. So with the next start I will have an RX 480. But what about stability? So first we can have a look at 
start a render test and see if that works. And so far it seems to be okay. Um, have a power draw of 128 watts. Temperature are okay. 47 degrees with 40% fan speed. That's within reason, I guess. Memory, no artifacting or anything. So that's quite nice. Next up, I will run some benchmarks. So 3D mark, and after that, a bit of mining, I guess, maybe folding at home, but I have quite high hopes for this, that it will work. Although it needs to be said, um, this is like a major surgery. This GPU will never be as reliable as uh, like a factory made GPU. So yeah. Time will tell how good it is. It's going to be working in my secondary PC. And yeah, if it dies, I will tell you. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.